Hello class, welcome to another day. For today's lesson, we're going to be learning about completing the square. Completing the square is another method for satisfying a quadratic equation or finding what x equals to make the left side equal the right side, which means finding the roots or finding the values of x. So far, we've, t we've learned how to solve for x using two methods. One of those methods has been factoring. The other one has been by graphing. So today is our third method, and that is by completing the square. For number one and number two, we don't actually have to complete the square because the square has already been completed for us. What it is is on the left side of number one and two, you see a binomial squared. And on the right side, you, equal a no you see a number. On the left side, being that we have that binomial squared, if we see that on the left side, the way we can solve for x or get this x all by itself is by first taking the square root of both sides. So if we take the square root of both sides, this exponent of 2 cancels out, and we're just left with x plus 3. That equals the square root of 16. Now remember, class, when you take the square root of both sides, you have to have the plus and the minus with that square root 16. So as I continue to solve, I now have x plus 3 equals the square root of 16 is obviously 4. So we have plus and minus 4. Now we want to get x all by itself. So right now there's that positive 3 there on the left side. So I'm going to get rid of that 3 by subtracting 3 from both sides. So I have x equaling a negative 3 plus and minus 4. Now being that we have a negative 3 plus and minus 4, I'm going to have two different values for what x can be. And as you can see, this is a quadratic because you see an exponent of 2 right here. So if you see an exponent of 2, you're going to have two values for x that satisfy this equation. So let's find what both of them are. The first one is going to be x equals a negative 3 plus 4. And the other one is x equals a negative 3 minus 4. Those are our two solutions for x. So when we take a negative 3 plus 4, we get x equals a positive 1. This is one of our answers. This is one of the roots, or this is one of our zeros. The other one is x equals a negative 3 minus 4 is a negative 7. So I get two answers. My answers are 1 and a negative 7. If you wanted to check your work, you could put this 1 and this negative 7 back in here for x. And if you were to solve for this x, or if you were to substitute the value back in for x and go on to simplify, you would get 16 equals 16. Um, and the same thing, you can do that for the negative 7 right here as well. So if you want to check your work, you could always do that. Let's practice number two. Number two, once again, I have a binomial squared on the left side. So if I want to solve for x, I'm going to take the inverse operation of squaring something, which is square rooting that. So I would get x minus 4 equals plus and minus the square root of 20. If you guys remember this from last chapter, and I think you guys have gotten to be pretty good at this, this square root of 20 breaks down into 5 times 4. So if you could simplify the radical, make sure you do that. So now, after simplifying the radical, we get x minus 4 equals plus and minus. The square root of 4 is 2, so 2 comes outside the radical, and the square root of 5 stays inside the radical. And then my last step would be if I want to get x all by itself, I have to add 4. So x equals a positive 4 on the left side, plus and minus 2 square root 5. And this is your answer on this one. You can't go any further than this. I want to let you know on a test, I would accept this as a correct answer. Just to give you a little warning, on Excel math, they might split this up into two different answers. So they might have their answers as being x equals 4 plus 2 square root 5, as well as x equals 4 minus 2 square root 5. So I would also accept this answer on a test, which they mean the same thing, because 4 plus 2 square root 5 and 4 minus 2 square root 5 is the same thing as 4 plus and minus 2 square root 5. 
So that's just a little introductory on, on the application of completing the square. When we have a binomial squared on the left side, which is what we do on this one, if we have a binomial squared on the left side, we can square root both sides and then solve for x, quite simply. So my goal of completing the square is to make a binomial squared on the left side. That is what I want to do. That is my objective for completing the square, is to get a binomial squared on the left side. And here is how we're going to go about doing that. You're going to see at the top <coughs> that in order to complete the square, we have to find what goes in the blank. To find what goes in the blank, we're going to have b divided by 2 and that quantity squared. This might not make much sense right now, but after we do a few examples, I believe that it will make perfect sense. In order to complete the square, I have to have my x squared and my x on the left side all by itself, and my constant term, or my numbers, has to go on the right side. So that's the first step when completing the square. Now class, make sure you write down exactly what I write down. I want it written this way. You're going to have x squared plus 8x plus a blank. Make sure you put that blank there. That is going to equal, after I add this 20 and bring it over here, I get a positive 20 plus a blank on the right side. So we have x squared plus 8x plus a blank equals 20 plus a blank. Now, just like it says back up here, in order to find what goes in this blank and what goes in this blank is I take b divided by 2 and square it. I take b divided by 2 and then square it. So as a refresher in standard form, this number is a, this number is b, this number is c. In order to find what goes in this green circle, I take b, I divide it by 2, and I square it. So I will do that up here. If you could pay attention on the top right part of your screen, I get 8, which is b, divided by 2. Sorry about that. 8 divided by 2, that quantity squared. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 4 squared is obviously 16. So the number that goes in the blank, or the number that goes in this green circle, is a positive 16. Remember, an equation is very, very similar to a balance. If I add 16 to the left side, in order to balance this equation, I have to add 16 to the right side. So I add 16 in that blank as well. So you'll notice what goes in the blanks is going to be identical as long as my coefficient in front of my x squared is 1, which it is. I'll introduce what happens when we have a different coefficient on later problems. So we have x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 20 plus 16. Now my next step is I want to factor this left side, or I want to make this left side into two different binomials. Okay. So I think of factors of x squared, which is obviously x and x, factors of 16 that are going to give me 4, or that give me 8, which would be a positive 4 and a positive 4. So x plus 4 times x plus 4 is the same thing as x squared plus 8x plus 16. So notice going from this step to this step, we didn't change anything. We just broke this trinomial up into two binomials. So I'm going to erase this because we want this, these two binomials right here. But I just want to let you know that going from this step to this step, we didn't change anything. We only factored it. That equals a positive 36 on the right side. Now, class, what do you notice about these two binomials? Hopefully you notice that they are completely identical. They are the same. If we say 7 times 7, another way of saying that is 7 squared. If we say x multiplied by x, another way of saying that is x squared. So if we say x plus 4 times the quantity x plus 4, we can rewrite that as saying x plus 4 quantity squared. x plus 4 times x plus 4 is x plus 4 quantity squared. That equals 36. Hopefully this looks familiar to you now. On the first two questions, we had a binomial squared on the left side equaling a number on the right side. 
Looking at number two, a binomial squared on the left side equaling a number on the right side. Same thing as number one, a binomial squared on the left side equaling a number on the right side. So now, let's solve number three the same way we solved number one and number two. The first thing, to get x all by itself, let's take the square root of both sides. So we have x plus 4 equals the plus and minus square root of 36. Hopefully I could do this all in one step, if that's okay with everybody. I'm going to subtract 4 and simplify my radical. x equals a negative 4 plus and minus the square root of 36 is 6. And now, finally solving for x, I get x equals the negative 4 plus 6, and x equals a negative 4 minus 6. So what are my values of x? x equals a positive 2, and x equals a negative 10. These are my solutions. 2 and 10, if I were to substitute them back up top here, if I were to put them in for x, it would make this statement, this equation, true. The left side would equal the right side. I wonder if some of you are thinking this right now. Mr. Berge, this took way too long, and this one could actually even be factored. Why can't we just factor this one? If you're thinking that, you are absolutely right. x squared plus 8x minus 20. x squared plus 8x minus 20 equals 0. That can be factored. It could be factored into x and x, and a positive 10, negative 2. So now as I set these factors equal to 0, x plus 10 equals 0, and x minus 2 equals 0, x equals a negative 10, and x equals a positive 2, which is the exact same thing that we got when we completed the square. 2, negative 10, 2, negative 10. The reason, class, why we have to do this longer process of completing the square is because we ended up with integer values when we factor. There are going to be times where we don't get integer values, meaning that, there's, that there, it's impossible to factor. That is going to happen. If it's impossible to factor, this completing the square works every single time. So that's why we have to learn this method. Another reason is because later on, Coming up next week, we're going to be translating this into vertex form, which we're going to have to complete the square, and it makes graphing parabolas much, much simpler when they're in vertex form instead of standard form. So that is why we learn how to complete the square. So the next five problems on our notes is all going to be practicing completing the square. So continue to work with me. On number four, the first thing we have to do is get x squared plus 4x on the left side all by itself. So we have x squared plus 4x, remember this part, plus a blank. That equals a positive 12 plus a blank. I wanted to get 12 onto the right side, so I have to add 12. Now, I ask myself, what goes in this blank? And it is b divided by 2, that quantity squared. b happens to be 4, so 4 divided by 2, that quantity squared. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 2 squared is a positive 4. So I end up with a 4 right here. If I add 4 to the left side, remember it's a balance, I have to add 4 to the right side to keep it balanced. So now, as I make my left side into a binomial squared, I get x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 2, or it's just x plus 2 quantity squared. I hope I didn't go too fast there. If you wanted to, you could rewrite this x plus 2 times x plus 2. And then once you FOIL this, you'll get right back to x squared plus 4, x plus 4. But I'm just going to write it as a binomial squared right away. This x squared plus 4x plus 4 is the same thing as saying x plus 2 quantity squared. So we have a binomial on the left side squared. That equals a positive 16 on the right side. Once again, this is the exact same thing as problems number 1 and problem number 2. I now take the square root of both sides to get x all by itself. So x plus 2 equals plus and minus 
the square root of 16 is 4. Now getting x all by itself, I subtract 2. x equals a negative 2 plus and minus 4. Well, a negative 2 plus 4, x equals a positive 2. A negative 2 minus 4, x equals a negative 6. So there are my solutions. There are my zeros. Those are my roots. That satisfies the equation x squared plus 4x minus 12 equals 0. My answer is x equals 2, and x equals a negative 6. All righty, turning the page over. We now are on to a little bit of a different animal. And I ask you the question, how do you feel about fractions? Because uh, when our coefficient is a number other than 1, if our a value is a number, is a number other than 1, we're probably going to get to some fractions. And hopefully you have this attitude, I love fractions, as you give me this scowl on your face. One thing I thought kind of interesting about this picture, do you guys notice the symbol on his forehead? That's comical, isn't it? Hopefully you all see it is the number pi. That's hilarious, isn't it? Anyway, I get a kick out of that kind of stuff. Anyway, you're going to have to deal with a lot of fractions on this one. And you could always just use your calculator. But if you know how to multiply, add, subtract fractions in your head, you're going to be much better off. All right. The same is true of the last ones that we did. I want the x squared and the x on the left side all by itself. So I'm going to subtract a 3. So I get 2x squared minus 5x. Don't worry about the blank right now. We'll have to do something else about that in a second. That equals a negative 3. Now, I cannot complete the square unless my coefficient in front of my x squared term is a positive 1. Because this term, that number, is not a positive 1, I have to divide by that 2 so that I will get this x squared to be a positive 1 in front of it. So if I want to make this 2x squared 1x squared, 2x squared minus 5x equals negative 3, I'm going to have to divide the left side by 2. So let's divide everything by 2, or basically, class, I'm saying let's factor out a 2. If I factor out a 2, I bring that out in front, and I am left with x squared, if I take a negative 5 and divide it by 2, I am left with a negative 5 halves. A negative 5 halves x. Now this is where I'm going to have my blank <coughs> equals a negative 3 plus a blank. So all I did was I divided everything on my left side by 2. All right, let's find what goes in our blank. In our blank, to find that, it's a negative b divided by 2. Oh, not a negative b, just b divided by 2 squared. It's just b divided by 2 squared. So if I take 5 halves and divide it by 2, 5 halves divided by 2, class, if I divide by 2, isn't that the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal? which would be multiplying by 1 half. Does that make sense to everyone? If you want to, you can just do that in your calculator. I have no problems with that. But if you want to do it maybe a little bit quicker way in your head, it's the same thing as multiplying by a half, which is the same thing as 5 fourths. B divided by 2 equals 5 fourths. And now this number we square. So 5 squared is 25, and 4 squared is 16. Any questions there? Not that I would answer them anyway. B divided by 2 squared is 5 fourths squared, which is 25 sixteenths. Now, instinctively, you say, well, if I added 25 sixteenths to the left side, I have to add 25 sixteenths to the right side. Your thinking is good, but it's not quite right. You don't add 25 sixteenths. What did you actually add to the left side? You actually added 2 times 25 sixteenths. You have to distribute that 2. So what is 2 times 25 sixteenths? Hopefully you see it's 50 sixteenths, or you could just say it is 25 eighths. I actually added 25 eighths to the left side. So if I added 25 eighths to the left side, I have to add 25 eighths to the right side. 
okay? These definitely get more difficult when you have a coefficient other than 1 in front of your x squared. So now we have 2 times the quantity x squared minus 5x plus 25 sixteenths equals a negative 3 plus 25 eighths. Now this trinomial right here, I want to make this into a binomial squared. And that binomial squared is going to be 2 times the quantity, a binomial squared. What binomial is that going to, going to be? This term is always going to be x. Class, the sign in between the two terms in the binomial is always going to be the same as this sign. Notice how on these two problems, my binomial squared was the same sign as my number in front of b. On this one, my binomial squared was the same sign as my number in front of b. Those are both pluses, so if I have a negative sign in front of my b, I have a negative sign in my binomial. It's x minus. Now if you've also noticed this pattern on the last one, <coughs> my b divided by 2, this is the number that is the second term in my binomial. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 2 went right here. My b divided by 2 in problem number 3, 8 divided by 2 was 4, and as you can see, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and this 4 was the one that went in the second term of my binomial. So I understand this is getting kind of messy, I apologize for that, but I want you to get two different things about your binomial squared. One thing is that the sign in between the two terms in your binomial is always going to be the sign that's in front of b. If this is negative, the sign in front of the sign in between my two terms of binomial is going to be negative. If it's positive, obviously then it's going to be positive. And this term is the same thing as b divided by 2. When I took b and divided it by 2, I took 5 halves and divided it by 2, which was the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. So I got 5 fourths as the second term in my binomial. B divided by 2 is the number that will always go here. Whew! And as I continue, on the right side I have a negative 3 plus 25 eighths. If you do that in your calculator, a negative 3 plus 25 eighths is the same thing as 1 eighth. So I get 1 eighth on the right side. All right, let's take a step back. We now have a binomial squared, x minus 5 fourths, that quantity squared, multiplied by the 2, that equals 1 eighth. Now I want to get x all by itself. In order to get x all by itself, I have to get rid of everything around x. The first thing, let's divide the left side by 2. I don't need that 2 there, so let's divide both sides by 2. I get x minus 5 fourths, that quantity squared, that equals 1 eighth divided by 2. 1 eighth divided by 2 is the same thing as 1 sixteenth. Now I square root both sides. So I get x minus 5 fourths, that equals plus and minus. The square root of 1 16th is, the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 16 is 4. And finally, I get x equals, as I add 5 fourths to both sides, I get 5 fourths plus and minus 1 fourth. 5 fourths plus 1 fourth, x equals 6 fourths, which is 3 halves. 5 fourths minus 1 fourth, x equals 5 minus 1 is 4 fourths, and 4 fourths is the same thing as 1. So x equals 3 halves, and x equals 1. I could just imagine the thoughts that are going through your head right now. You're probably just mad at me. You're confused, possibly. You're frustrated. I promise you, class, the more you do of these, the easier it becomes. So after we do number six, hopefully things will be easier yet. And after we do number eight, which is our other one with a coefficient other than one in front of my x squared, hopefully then you will be experts at it. So the more practice you get, 
the better you become. So stick with me. Don't get discouraged. Let's try another one. First step, let's get x squared and x all by itself on the left side. So I have 3x squared minus 2x equals a positive 1. Now, if you see a number in front of x squared, you have to get rid of that number. So right now, it is a 3. So in order to get rid of that 3, I have to divide everything on my left side by 3. Or I'm factoring out a 3 is another way you could look at it. 3 times the quantity x squared minus 2 divided by 3 is just 2 thirds x. I have this plus a blank. That equals 1. Now I ask myself, what goes in the blank? It is b divided by 2 squared. And b divided by 2 is going to be 2 thirds divided by 2, which is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. So we get 2 sixths, which is the same thing as 1 third. This 1 third is what I'm going to square. 1 third squared is the same thing as 1 ninth. So in my blank, I get 1 ninth. Remember, class, you have a blank on the right side as well. I forgot to put that in here just now. So you have plus a blank. <clears throat> Instinctively, you think you have 1 ninth here. But remember, you didn't add 1 ninth to the left side, did you? You added 3 times 1 ninth. And 3 times 1 ninth is 3 ninths. And 3 ninths is the same thing as 1 third. What you actually added was 1 third to the left side. So if you add 1 third to the left side, you have to add 1 third to the right side. Now, we have 3 times a binomial squared. What binomial squared is that? Well, this term is always x. The sign in between is always the sign in front of b, which is a negative sign. And the second term in my, in my binomial is b divided by 2. And b divided by 2 was 2 thirds divided by 2, which is the same thing as multiplying by a half, which we got to be 1 third. So x minus 1 third is going to be my binomial squared. That equals 1 plus 1 third equals 4 thirds. So this is what I get after I complete the square. Now I want to get x all by itself. My first step is to divide by 3. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. x minus 1 third quantity squared equals 4 thirds divided by 3 is the same thing as 4 ninths. I then square root both sides to get rid of my exponent of 2. I get x minus a third on the left side. That equals plus and minus the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. And then I add 1 third to both sides. So x equals 1 third plus and minus 2 thirds. My solutions are x equals 1 third plus 2 thirds is 3 thirds, which is 1. And 1 third minus 2 thirds is a negative 1 third. x equals a negative 1 third. And there is our answer for number 6. Class, if these words are encouraging to you at all, I hope they are. If you're ever uncertain about whether you got the right answer or not, once again, you could check every single one of your answers in your equation at the very top. If x equals 1, substitute in 1 for each and every one of these x's. And after solving, you should get 0 equals 0. Do the exact same thing for a negative 1 third. Put in a negative 1 third for each of these x's. And you will come up with 0 equals 0 if you did it right. So hopefully that is encouraging to you. I ran out of time on my prep. I have another class coming in in about two minutes. So I'm going to have to record the next two, video, the next two problems in a second lesson. So I will have to stop now. And then the sub will have to start problem number seven and problem number eight. And then you can work on your homework for tomorrow.